Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate uh, the composition of a Turing interaction function and its inverse. So basically what you have, you can see we have here four examples that I'm going to go through. Now, when we're taking the inverse, um, remember when we're taking the inverse, that means we're trying to find the angle, right? Or we're trying to basically look at you know, what is the angle um, of, our, of our function. Well, when you can see here, when we're dealing with the court, when we're dealing with the unit circle, it's fairly obvious. We know what points are on. We know what points correspond with certain angles on the unit circle. Um, none of these points, though, look like. None of these points look like they're ones familiar that we've used on the unit circle. So then, how can we evaluate the composition? How can I take the inverse sine inverse? You know, for fifths. Well, what we can do, we don't actually necessarily have to evaluate for the angle. Because think about it, if we're going to evaluate the cosine of this, think of that we evaluate the cosine of theta. Like this represents theta. So therefore, we can say theta is equal to sine inverse of 4 over 5, right? That's what we're trying to figure out. Theta equals the inverse of 4 over 5. Well, we don't know what that angle is, but we don't necessarily have to know what that angle is. Because what we can do is if we take the sine of both sides, sine, oops, sorry. If we take the sine of both sides, then what happens is the sine and sine inverse undo each other. And I'm just left with the sine of theta is equal to, I'm sorry, what am I doing? Yeah, sine of theta is equal to 4 over 5. So basically what we can do is, to, is not only knowing what the angle, we're looking into find the cosine of this. So what we can do is, um, since sine of theta is to 4 over 5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a right triangle. I don't know what that angle is, but I know that um, this has to be a positive 4, and this is or 5 represents our hypotenuse. Now, by using a Pythagorean triple, okay, and this is for our theta, right? This is that theta. Theta, sine of theta equals 4 over 5. Now, by using that theta, again, we don't know what that theta is. We don't know the exact value. You could use a calculator, but we don't need to. By using your Pythagorean triple, or you could use the Pythagorean theorem if you need to, what we can do is determine that this side length is 3. Now, again, that is for this theta. And what are we really asking of that theta? We're really just saying, what is the cosine? Well, remember, cosine of theta represents your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So therefore, my final answer is going to be 3. Did I write that down wrong? Yeah, 3 over 5. There you go. Good. Done. OK? Um, so it all really depends on we don't actually have to f evaluate for the theta in this case. We just need to find the triangle that cr is created by that theta. Um, so let's go and look at number two. Let's go and do another example of this. So again, now what we're asking us is do the tangent of theta, where th this theta equals the cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths. Okay? So basically what we want to do is create a triangle where the inverse cosine is 5 over 13 of an angle. So now I'm going to create um, cosine, again, is all positive. So therefore, um, the inverse cosine since that's positive, now remember when we're, I should have uh, mentioned this. When we're talking about the range, the reason why I chose this triangle, all right, it could have also been a triangle that looked like this if this was negative. All right? But since it was positive, I used an upright triangle. Just very important just to make note of. Since, remember, the inverse cosine, the range is between 0 and 2 pi. Well, since 5 is a positive value, I know the cosine is going to be to the right. So that's going to work. It's not going to be a triangle to the left. Basically, what I'm saying is my angle could be like this or like this. But since cosine is, since my inverse of my angle is positive, I know that 5 has to be positive, And my hypotenuse is always positive. So now, all, this is for the angle theta. Now, all I simply need to do is figure out what tangent. Well, tangent, remember, is opposite over adjacent. So we need to know what our opposite side is. Well, again, we're only going to know our opposite if we know our, Pythag if we know our Pythagorean triples or using the Pythagorean theorem. And in this case, we know that our Pythagorean theorem is going to give us 12. So therefore, the cosine inverse of 5 over 13 gives us this theta, which creates this triangle. By have creating this triangle, which is a right triangle, I should note that. 
Since it's a right triangle, I can find the missing part, which now allows me to evaluate for the tangent of the angle that this, that this created. So therefore, the tangent of um, this theta is 12 over 5. All right, so now let's go into a triangle that tangent is going to create. Um, oh, there it is. I don't remember this triangle, 7 squared plus 24 squared. Oh, yeah. I should have known my Pythagorean triples. Um, OK, so now again, basically what we're going to do is we need to, now we're given our sine of our theta. Remember, we're kind of going back to this. We need to figure out sine of theta. Well, to do that, we need to figure out the triangle. All right. Now, when theta is pot, now you can see here I have 7 over 24. Both those terms are positive. Now, tangent is only positive in the first and in the fourth quadrant. However, or sorry, third quadrant. But the third quadrant is not within the range. So we can only create a triangle for the inverse tangent in the first quadrant. So what we're basically what I'm basically saying is theta is equal to tangent inverse of 7 over 24. So my theta is equal to that. If I take the tangent of both sides, then tangent of theta is equal to 7 over 24. Right? If you take the tangent of both sides, those undo each other. And I'm just left with tangent theta is 24. Well, therefore, let's create a triangle. They're both positive. Theta, opposite over adjacent. Using your Pythagorean triple, which I forgot, um, also using the Pythagorean theorem, 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 625. The square root of 625 is going to be 25. Now, to identify the sign is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which would be 7 over 25. All right, so now let's go and get to our last one, um, which is inverse, uh, inverse sine. 12 over 13, and then we're now we're going to take the cotangent of this. So hopefully you kind of understand the rules basically here. All we simply want to do is create our triangle, which in this case is going to be 12 over 13. So remember this is sine, so it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Um, then it's going to be in the first quadrant because the um, both my points are both positive. And so we have 12 over 13. That means by using my Pythagorean triple, we know that my adjacent side is going to be 5. Now remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So that is going to be 5 over opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. Did I not write it down again? Oh, yeah, I changed it. OK, I totally forgot about that. So it's going to be 5 over 12. Totally forgot I changed the problem. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate uh, your trigonometric. Uh, that's how you evaluate the composition of your trigonometric functions of a, um, uh, and its inverse when you have a, by using a right triangle. Thanks.